Question 14 from the 2019 Higher Physics Examination Section 2. Solids can be categorised as conductors, insulators or semiconductors, depending on their ability to conduct electricity. Their electrical conductivity can be explained using band theory. The diagrams show the valence and conduction bands of three solids X, Y and Z. One represents a conductor, one represents an insulator and one represents a semiconductor. And for one mark we are asked to fill in this table, complete the table to show which solid represents a conductor and an insulator and a semiconductor. Well your first look diagram uh, the band diagram is to look for one where the conduction band and the valence band are almost in one continuum, almost on top of one another, because that will be the, in fact, the conductor. So if we look very closely, we can see this one here. The conduction band is almost right inside the valence band, and that means these electrons here can move about very, very freely in the conduction band. So we must know from our diagrams that that is a conductor. That diagram represents a conductor. Now we go to the opposite end of the extreme and we look for a valence band which is separated from the conduction band by quite a big energy gap, which means if the valence band is full, the electrons cannot get into the conduction band because of the large energy gap. Therefore you won't have a conductor. You'll have what we call an insulator. So it's this diagram here which has got the valence band separated from the conduction band with a big energy gap. So that will be the insulator. I think you can guess what a semiconductor is. It is the one where the valence band is separated from the conduction band, but the energy gap is still small enough for some electrons to jump up into the conduction band given enough energy. So this one here is the semiconductor. So our table will look something like this. For solid X, it will be an insulator. So solid X is an insulator. Solid Y is a semiconductor. And solid Z will be a conductor. And that will gain you your one mark, basically learning the different band theories for insulator, semiconductor and conductor. Question 14 continued, part B. Using band theory, explain why conduction can take place in a semiconductor at room temperature. Now usually semiconductors, no conduction can take place. So let's take a look at the band theory diagram for a semiconductor. And there we have it there. Now the valence band is full of electrons. They can't move about. Therefore, you have an insulator. There'll be no conduction take place. But in room temperature, there's enough heat energy to promote these electrons from the valence band into the largely empty conduction band. You have something like that. So these electrons are then in a the conduction band and they're free to move about and therefore the semiconductor becomes a better conductor. You get conduction taking place at room temperature. So we can summarise it with this sentence here. Electrons in the valence band can acquire enough energy from the surroundings at room temperature and move across the energy gap into the conduction band. And it's these three electrons in that conduction band that can make it a better conductor at room temperature. Question 14, Part C. Silicon can be doped with arsenic to produce an N-type semiconductor. State the effect that doping has on the conductivity of silicon. Well, in this case, you just have to state it. If we think back to a diagram of the silicon crystal, there we have it there. You can see the arsenic uh, growing into the crystal. It's what we call doping. And arsenic has five electrons in its outer shell. And you can see that when they all join up in the crystal, you're going to have that free electron at one of the points where arsenic is grown into the, the silicon structure. And it's that free electron, if you take over the full crystal, you're going to have lots of those free electrons and therefore the conductivity of the silicon will increase due to the fact that it's got that, those extra electrons due to the arsenic atom. So, a simple answer to that one then is state the effect that doping has on the conductivity of silicon. It just really increases the conductivity. 
so it increases the conductivity and that will give you the one mark conductivity and you have your one mark for that for those reasons question 14 part d resistivity is a measure of a material's property to oppose the flow of charge the resistivity of silicon is 2.3 times 10 to power 3 ohm meters and the resistivity of copper is 1.7 times 10 to minus 8 ohm meters and what we've got to do is compare the resistivity of silicon to the resistivity of copper in terms of orders of magnitude and we're going to get two marks for that well when we're dealing with orders of magnitude you can forget the 1.7 and the 2.3 because those numbers are very close to each other and all we have to do is compare the powers of 10 so for silicon we have the following silicon has an order of magnitude of 10 to the power 3 ohm meters and copper has got an order of magnitude of 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters so to compare them we just make a ratio or a fraction and we have that and we use the maths rule that if you are dividing powers of 10 you take away or you subtract the bottom power from the top so that becomes 10 to power 3 take away minus 8 so that becomes equal to 10 to the power 11 so silicon in ratio with copper has got a resistivity which is 10 to the power 11 times more and that's all you really have to do so the resistivity of silicon is 11 orders of magnitude greater and that's your order of magnitude there <laughs>